get to know yous, little sure. relationship building. We could do a fun uh, question, <laughs> some kind of a prompt. If anyone wants to do that, should we start with those or should we start with uh, announcements? Where do you want to start? Maybe go? I'd rather start with it with the introductions because sometimes announcements, especially when there's not scheduled content, they can devolve or evolve into longer conversations. Let's do it. Does that sound okay? Totally. Um, we can do what we say at Ace Popcorn style where someone goes and then they popcorn it to pass it to somebody else. Um, our favorite, since, since we've been on a big hiring push at ACE this last year, our favorite um, prompt for these introductions is, uh, so name, pronouns, organization. Um, lately we've been doing the um, indigenous land that we occupy. I think there's a link where you can look that up. We could put that in there if you know that. Um, organization, and then um, the prompt being, thanks, Deb, uh, what skill would you bring to the zombie apocalypse? So uh, I can kick it off. Um, so I'm Reb Anderson. I am Director of Education at ACE, Alliance for Climate Education. I use she, her pronouns. I am based in Truckee, California, which is uh, indigenous land belonging to the Washoe people. And the skill that I, I think I bring multiple skills to the zombie apocalypse. Um, but one thing, um, one that sport I practice in the winter is biathlon, which is Nordic skiing and shooting, um, which I think would, uh, so it's not a high powered firearm, but it is a firearm, which I have mixed feelings about, but um, I think that that skill would come in handy when it comes to, I would be on the front lines protecting you all from the zombies and the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> and I will popcorn it to Katie. Hi everyone, I'm Katie Boyd. I um, technically am at the Ceres Education and Outreach Group, which is the Cooperative Institute for Research and Environmental Sciences, which is based at the University of Colorado in Boulder. Ah, such a long thing, but I'm also the Clean Program Manager, which is how most of you know me. Um, and the indigenous land that we are on here. Um, oh, I should have actually looked it up again. It's um, Cheyenne, Arapaho, and Ute, I believe. Yeah, that's right, Katie. Yeah, I think I saw that at the bottom of your email the other day, Katie. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, I like to double check on here because I just <laughs> want to make sure I remember it correctly. Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute. And then actually, the site says um, Sue may have been in this area as well. So, um, you know, there's a lot of conglomeration of different um, groups who moved through this area back then um, when they were more able to um, move across the land. Um, so that's actually an interesting thing about Colorado I always like. Um, in terms of the skill I'd bring to the zombie apocalypse, that is a great question. And I actually am one of those people that when I tend to say that I am not one of those people who would probably survive the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> like I'm okay being one of the majority of people who don't have those kinds of special skills. Um, I have other special <laughs> skills, but if I were to survive it, I do think, um, some, to some extent, I have um, some sort of leadership, like, you know, I'm happy to not take a lead, but um, when, when other people sort of need someone to say, here's what we're doing, here's the plan, I am sort of good at kind of um, organizing folks and things, so um, I might be good at that. There's lots of ways you can do that. You can organize the, the food supplies, the campfire songs. All right, and then Katie, pop popcorn is someone else. Let's see who, um, I have Patrick is sort of in the top left corner for me, so we'll go there. Okie doke. Um, I wanna throw this back up here in the chat for anybody that jumped in late and is wondering what's going on. So here is the list of prompts for the introduction in the chat. Um, my name is Patrick Chandler. 
uh, he, him, his. And uh, I guess I'll claim CU as my organization a little more specifically. I work a lot with a group called Inside the Greenhouse at the University of Colorado that focuses on using performance uh, media and fine art to communicate about climate change. And with CLEAN, I am project coordinator who uh, helps bring in our speakers and communicate with them uh, for our weekly teleconferences. Um, let's see. So my native land listing is very similar to Katie's. It's you, Cheyenne, and Arapaho, and as she mentioned, uh, possibly Sue as well. And uh, I don't know, zombie apocalypse skill, I, I have a number of things I feel like I could choose from. I was reminded last weekend tromping around with a very heavy pack on of uh, running a search and rescue team for a number of years in my 20s. So I, I think that that counts. Um, but I also feel like I would be a pretty solid camp chef with uh, my cooking skills. So somewhere between search and rescue and cooking. And I am going to pass it to uh, Devaretti. If she is here and available. Devaretti? Are you she with may us? Have. She, she may have, have stepped away. Yeah, I've just stepped away from you. Okay, in that case, uh, how about Genevieve? Hi, everyone. Good to see you. I'm on the um, uh, the browser, so I can only see like whoever is actually talking. <laughs> uh, I can't see the gallery view. Um, so I'm uh, from NASA Goddard Space Flight Center um, and the contracting company SSAI, and I'm the leader of the Earth to Sky Interagency Partnership. Uh, so we're, our, we're providing climate communication resources uh, for informal educators and interpreters uh, using NASA tools. And uh, my, uh, the land I live on and work on is uh, uh, part of uh, Nakachtang land, and it may also be part of the Powhatan Confederacy. And if in a zombie apocalypse, I think I would use my astronomy degree to navigate um, by the sun and the stars and use a little bit of herbalism. I don't think I would last very long. I do like to prepare with some, um, uh, uh, I, like to, I do like to keep a bug out bag ready to go. Nice. Thanks, Genevieve. Okay, you can pass it to someone else. You can do a little oh, hand up uh, or thumbs up if you haven't gone yet. Uh, let's see, I have to be able to see the participant list. I'm not sure how to do that. I can pick someone for you if you can't get to it. Let's see, is there, are people raising their hands if they're, I can see the participant list and there's a little cloud. I don't know what it means. Hmm. Yeah, actually, I'll okay, go, if you wouldn't mind, ahead. I just, thanks. Yeah. I'll go ahead and go next, because uh, I'm Great. driving, so I can't like pick the, anyway, just raise Great. my hand or anything, I haven't gone yet, so. <laughs> go ahead, this is Colleen, yes? Uh, yes, this is Colleen Fisk, I work uh, for Renewable Energy Alaska Project. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and our offices are on the Denina Athabaskan lands, and where I live about 40 miles away is an overlap of the Denina uh, and the Atna Athabaskan, closest to the Chicklu native village. I, my work is the education director for the nonprofit that I work for, so Normally, I travel around the state doing lessons with K through 12 students and teacher trainings, and of course, that's all virtual now. But it's been really interesting that way. And my zombie apocalypse skill is that I would kill it at animal husbandry. I grew up on a farm, and I have a degree in animal science, and I have a horse, and I can take care of all the food animals and your plow horses that we would need. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks, Colleen. Do you want me to pick somebody since you're on the phone? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. How about Deb? Great. 
I'm Deb Morrison. I go by she, her. Um, I have a multi-organizational identity too, but uh, let's see, it's kind of amusing to give it all. I, I'm a learning scientist at the Institute of Science and Math Education. I'm on the steering committee for ECOS, the Education Community um, Communication Outreach Organization for the UN, uh, community for the UN. And I'm also a locally elected trustee for the Islands Trust here where I live on their traditional territories. Um, we often name our traditional territory as the Wasonic Nation. However, we are actually in an overlapping space. This is the crossroads for many, many um, nations. And so um, all of them include folks like the Hoquiam, uh, the Shmanis, the Temexuil, and the um, Slauson, as well as the Lummi, even though they're in the US, but this American US border, of course, didn't originally exist. So we are definitely at the crossroads space where the salmon and the orca uh, also roam around in all different ways. So um, what skill would I bring to a zombie apocalypse? So one of the things that many folks in education don't know about me um, that is kind of like my superpower, like Colleen saying, is I was an ecologist for 10 years prior to coming into climate change education in British Columbia. So I spent a significant amount of time by myself or with my partner who was, you know, a mile or two away somewhere on a radio contact, um, roaming around in the forests of BC. And so I can find my way anywhere in a forest cover and um, can hike forever with a pack on. And um, yeah can generally know when things are coming at me in the bush too. <laughs> so that's probably all good skills in the zombie apocalypse. Um, and don't worry about starving because I can probably find you plants to eat as well as an ecologist. I know generally what's edible and what's not. Nice, Deb. Thank you. You wanna pass it along? Oh yes, let's see. I don't think we've heard from Jen, have we? Hi everybody, um, Jen Ketzer from um, Climate, um, from Where Do I Work? Oh yeah, the Wild Center's uh, Youth Climate Program and I go by she, her and I'm coming to you from the ancestral, traditional and contemporary occupied and unceded territory of the Haudenosaunee, which um, would include, actually is six different nations, so like Mohawk, Seneca, Cayuga, Onondaga, I'm missing so I'm missing one or two. So I'll, Oneida. I'll, I'll do Oneida, yes, thank you. So um in northern New York State. Um and my so I think like I feel like all my superpowers have already like gotten used up. So like Colleen, I was actually an animal science major too in, in college and spent a lot of time hanging around large animals and um taking care of large animals in various forms. So I could can handle that part. I can also, I also worked or was a naturalist slash ecologist for a long time and I feel super comfortable like wandering around in the woods and like figuring out where to go and also like noticing when things are not what they seem. Um, so I feel like that would be a good skill to have uh, um, if when the, when the zombies show up. And I'm going to send it to Frank. Ooh. All right, so uh, Frank Niepold, um, he, him, his, and I am uh, at NOAA's Climate Program Office and also the Clean Leadership Board. I'm a co-chair along with Anna Gold. Um, wow, so a uh, uh, land acknowledgement. So I, I come to you from the occupied uh, lands of the Piscataway uh, on the western shore of the Chesapeake Bay. And, and so what would I bring to the A, a not the, because it sounds like we're saying it's going to happen. Um, a zombie apocalypse is uh, one, I've had many jobs. One of them, I used to work on a land preserve uh, cutting trees. And so if, if we have axes, I'm good. I can make as many spikes and spike walls as you want. And I can grind for a long time. Um, so, you know, I just grind and grind. I'm known for that when I'm getting into physical labor. The second one is that uh, when I was up at uh, Mount Desert Island, 
at the College of the Atlantic, I used to study with a um, Mi'kmaq uh, educator and leader. Uh, name was Tamiki, and uh, I can I can actually, if I get back into it, I could actually find trails and trail and track. Um, uh, she used to say that that some people go in the woods and see nothing, and some people see everything. I was more on the see everything category, so. Uh, somehow we lost technology in the zombie apocalypse. So, you know, why don't we just fly away from them? I don't know, but you know, if we're, if we're on the ground, I'm good. So, uh, let's go, uh, Jim. Hello, I'm Jim Bray. Um, he, his, him, um, we're in an area that was occupied by, uh, and, and was kind of an interchange area with the Potawatomi, the Menominee, and the Ho-Chunk. And there is a lot of evidence of those groups here, uh, including um, some of their predecessors leaving burial mounds. Um, as far as organization is concerned, um, I'm the former education director for the American Meteorological Society's education program. I retired from that job about oh, four years ago and moved from DC back to Wisconsin. And right now I'm retired, but still very busy. Uh, I chair the local or county Democratic Party. Um, I'm a vice president of the local nature center and they're sort of their resident geologist. Uh-oh, Jim, I think we lost you. He may come back. He may not. Jimmy there? Looks it's pretty lost. Us, right? um, for zombie, uh, it's on, it says my internet is unstable. So I don't know. If okay, you're can... back, Jim. We lost you for a second there. You're okay. Um, I used to be the education director for the American Meteorological Society. Currently, um, I um, work in my local community at a local nature center. I'm very active in democratic politics, chairing the local party. And also um, I uh, uh, consult with businesses um, about climate change. And I put on some seminars and some information sessions for large uh, industrial firms and their leadership um, on climate change. And um, it seems like that's very important work uh, in the community um, as well as extending beyond. Uh, the zombie, I don't really know what the zombie apocalypse is. I guess I don't follow those sorts of things, but some skills are vegetable gardener. Uh, I am a very good vegetable gardener and I do vertical gardening and my production even in my backyard is really quite awesome. And we preserve, can, dry, freeze, um, all kinds of fruits and vegetables that we use for the winter, it's cold long Wisconsin winter. Um, I also am a very good navigator and I could do that at sea or on land, uh, being a professionally trained geographer. Thanks, Jim. Do you wanna pass it along? I think some of the folks that are off video have uh, I'll, I'll pass it on to Rachel. Rachel. Hi. Um, let's see, I'm Rachel. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am a doc student at the University of Washington in Seattle. Um, and so I live here in Seattle, so I'm um, on Duwamish and Coast Salish territories. Um, and a skill I guess I could bring that hasn't been mentioned yet is that I'm like a beginner amateur knitter. And so I could try to knit sweaters and hats for people to keep us warm in the winter of zombie apocalypse. Um, and I'm not sure who else has not gone yet. Um, who hasn't gone? You want to speak up? I think is Jim Callahan or Gina. Debrati looks like it. she's back now. Hey. Hey. I'll pass it on to Debrati. <laughs> okay, you passed to me. Or was that me? Okay, so yeah. sorry. Um, I, my name is Devardi and she, her, and I am in Lincoln, Nebraska School of Natural Resources. Um, I am an expert now in digging and making really good meals out of whatever is in my closet. So 
I would bring that skill. I, in the past few months, I have stretched my creativity <laughs> to, <laughs> to do that. So there, I would feed the zombies various combinations of food, even though I hear they only like brains, but I will feed, feed them. Okay, so that's it. What else did I miss? I think you got it. And then I'm nominating someone. Yeah, well, we're, we're down to our Either last couple here. So Jim, Jim Callahan. Callahan. Really? Okay. I think it's you, Jim. Great. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, so Jim Callahan, uh, he, him, his, Mobile Climate Science Labs. Um, here in San Francisco Bay Area, where uh, in the central part of the Bay Area, it is the Ohlone, Ohlone and Miwok people. Um, and then let's see, uh, if not becoming a food source for zombies, working on that, because if we go into the dead briefly, you get eaten, I guess. Um, I guess would would be a good idea to use, of course, if people know we've got a number of these infrared cameras and uh, thermal infrared cameras kind of gross to think about it, but uh, you definitely could tell the difference between a living person and an undead person. I guess it could be kind of cool. <laughs> Look out and say, don't shoot, you know, if everybody saw Light of Living Dead, don't shoot him, he's living, you know? It's pretty gross stuff, isn't it? So that's what I got. <laughs> that's awesome. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Again, if you can see people, people are cracking up. Gene, are you there? Hello. Yes, I am. I am. I can take my video off. I'm just wearing a mask because I'm in someone else's house. Uh, puppy sitting. So, hi. <laughs> Don't mind my mask. Um, so, yeah. I'm Gina. Um, my pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm a grad student at George Mason University in Virginia, although I do a lot of work with the Wild Center that Jen is with, uh, the Youth Climate Summit program there. Um, I also live in the same place as Jen, so I have the same indigenous land as her, the six nations that she mentioned. Um, I feel like I don't have any useful skills for a zombie apocalypse. I've been trying to rack my brain. Uh, I would be, in all honesty, pretty useless. I think the only thing that I could add is some kind of strong communication and team building slash peacemaking skills. Um, so some soft skills for you all, um, but that's about it. Um, but good to see you all. You too. Those are very important skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Negotiating truces, truces with the zombies. Did we miss anyone? We got us all. Thanks everyone. We, uh, we can move now to any announcements that people have to share with, with the network. Who has I have, oh, go ahead, Frank. So I may, Katie, you and I may be going the same place. Um, so Jen was just poking me in private messaging on the side that AGU uh, submissions are due tomorrow. And Katie, you've done a wonderful job of reminding us with all the details we would need in emails. However, tomorrow is still tomorrow, no matter what we do. Uh, and so uh, there, just remember that it is a virtual AGU meeting. So if you were thinking, oh, I just don't have the budget to travel, this is your year. Um, you know, uh, the, only, the only fee I think is gonna be a uh, abstract fee. I don't know if there's a registration fee. However, there's always the work around. If you're an educator, you can, you don't have, or a student, you don't have to pay for registration either. So I think if you really wanted to get the AGU, um, now is your year. Um, this is your time. Wow, I sound like a commercial. <laughs> and there, there are plenty of other sessions, you know, so, so, yeah. so look around, but if you want to um, submit something to one of the sessions that clean kind of um, sponsors or hosts at AGU, um, those I've put, um, if you just search for climate literacy, they come up really easily in the AGU search feature. So I've put the link to that search in the chat if you wanted to see those specific sessions. And unfortunately, I, I have to leave early today. I have to do a briefing with some California leaders for the ACE National Dialogues um, in two minutes. So um, 
I will miss the rest of this call. Hopefully, Rebbe, you and I can catch up later today. Frank, you're awesome. also doing that thing at two. The, I'm um, also doing end up, you should mention that. That's a good oh, thing. Oh, the end. <laughs> yeah, also that too. Just seems like everything seems to be happening now. So uh, at two o'clock, I'm joining the First Lady of New Jersey to have a conversation facilitated by NAAEE. I got that right, surprisingly. Um, on uh, climate change education and uh, across the curriculum and give it, remind you that uh, end of, uh, New Jersey is the first state to have ambitious climate education standards across the curriculum, all but two. And those two were, were not available because they weren't up for revision. Um, and, but uh, you know, Tammy Murphy is, is, is leading some powerful change in New Jersey. So now it's time to figure out how to support the teachers across the curriculum uh, in New Jersey, because uh, the standards is just the first piece of the puzzle. Then comes the professional development, the resources and the supports to actually help them be successful, which is really what she's trying to get at. So, um, but that's what I'll be doing at two o'clock. Frank, have you sent that out to the network? I believe so, but we can, yeah. I, I'm, if I I'm pulling agenda, it up now. I, I sent it out and then I'll, I'll put the link in the chat here in a second. Yep. Yeah, I saw it go through Jen to the network. So yeah, it yep. has been sent to Queens. And the ACE dialogue start next week. Ah. <laughs> That's it for me. Reminded you of that, Frank. Thanks. Uh, that would be you. <laughs> I thought we. I just it, you know I've just been grinding so hard I didn't look up and see that oh the trees that are coming up are really close. So. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, guys. Good to see you. Good to see you as all as well. Thanks, Frank. Other announcements. Um, so that was my announcement. Frank did the same one I was going to do, so I do not have another one. I hadn't realized that AG had already been turned virtual this year. Good to know. And I highly encourage you to all take a few minutes today and submit to the different sessions because we're really, and, and if you have folks that you know that are doing, are doing things that are novel in climate spaces, we would love to get them into those sessions. So. I think Katie, I, can't, I think it's you and myself and Frank and Anna are uh, like for the innovations one. So really great. Yeah. I would love to and I'm, I'm just not gonna be able to. So short, but yeah. Other announcements. Jen Kretzer, can I put you on the spot and hear about a uh, a recap of your stay institute last week oh my god it was awesome um deb was there and i'm so sad that i missed deb's session because i was moderating some other session but i've heard great great reviews of your session recorded, deb. Though, right? yes I, yeah. I just have a chance to go back but i've heard great things so we had i think the count was a little like around 260 educators that participated from across the US and Canada and one from Costa Rica. We had them divided into 17 geographic cohorts um, that uh, met up separately throughout the session, throughout the entire um, three days. And, I, and we had this incredible keynote speaker um, by the name of Kalisa Wing, who I really recommend you all check out. I'll type or put her name in the chat. So she is an anti-racism uh, educator and it changed the tenor of the entire, I feel like it changed the tenor of the entire conference. Like it, we led with that and, I, and that framed everything. We had started with kind of the typical climate here's a climate scientist to tell you about climate change. Like we did have Catherine Hayhoe as, as another keynote that was, um, but we, she didn't go first. If she had gone first, it would have been really different. So I think there was a lot of learning for all of us that, that were on the core team that were planning and, and, and sort of, you know, really trying to imagine what this would be like to do virtually because that, you know, um, I think one of my coworkers, Callie said just a little while ago, she's like, I felt like I was running from place to place, even though I was standing in my living room. <laughs> you know, it was just, we had a lot, it was a lot happening. So um, there was a lot of lessons learned. I think we'd love to do a presentation 
or clean, like, um, you know, get Kristen and Frank and Lindsay and, and Aaron Griffin and, you know, the whole core team to share out the lessons that we learned from it. But I think there was like 67 different sessions that people could go to, um, five different strands, seven or eight different Zoom accounts. Um, we used like, so there was like all the logistical stuff of like putting on a conference and then there was the content. But some of the testimonials that were really like, people stayed with us, like the metrics, or, or not the metrics, the analytics showed that people stayed with us for the whole three days. Um, like, it was like 90% of people stayed with us. People we had, they did pre-work, so like there was some huge percent, you know, I think it was like almost 100% of the people did the pre-work, like who does that, like that was amazing in and of itself. And um, people were really surprised by the intimacy that was created despite the geophysical difference. So that sort of mix of those like bigger um, like group sessions or workshops, but like lots and lots of opportunity to meet, still meet people and like breakout sessions and stuff. So it was like really, I felt like it was super powerful and really transformational. I'm still like processing it. And uh, we have a debrief session this week. So I was like really thrilled and also heard great things about um, Hakeem and Ariana's session. Of course, I, got, I didn't get to see that one either. But um, it was awesome. It was it was a huge lift, like climate gen amazingness. Like there was, you know, everyone came together, but like just to all the different platforms and the scheduling, like if you saw the snapshot of the spreadsheets that like were happening, like behind the scenes, it was like totally crazy. I don't know how AGU is gonna do it, but it was, uh, it was cool, it was a great time. And a lot of the sessions I think were recorded, but I'm not sure how public a lot of them will end up being because teachers paid for it. So it was like, I don't know, I don't know where actually where we landed. Some of the sessions like the Cal Calissa, I think we could um, share that out. I think that was a public lecture or public, you know, presentation. She was incredible. Anyway, I'll stop now. I could keep going on. That's so great, Jen. Yeah, I would love it. it and it seems like a couple other, or at least one other person in the chat agrees. Um, to have you all share out about that and yeah. clean, that would be great. Like I'm really excited about you. There was lots of lessons for us across the board. And I think that, um, you know, we're already figuring out like, okay, now what, like now what are we going to, like what happens next? Like it's, it was like, I know we already have a call with New York, with the New York city um, department of ed who had a huge cohort of like 40 teachers that were like, oh my God, this is incredible. We want to do this for New York city at scale. We're like, oh, it's like 90,000 wow. teachers in New York City. <laughs> wow, that's really exciting. Oh, so. You know, I mean, and that's that's the thing is like, I can see this, you know, I mean, the content and the sort of the climate and climate change aspect of it is one thing, but even just, you know, I'm sure there's lessons learned around the, the, the technology and how you did the virtual, you know, like right. virtual workshops, like we're all kind of still learning how to do that as well. So yeah, I think there's multiple values here for sure, yeah. Yeah, and I think like even simple things like what you just led, Reb, you know, we, everyone always introduced themselves with their, um, their names, their pronouns, and the native lands that they were coming from, like everywhere, you know, everyone was doing that. Like we kept re reinforcing that over and over again. Even that, like we got feedback from teachers. They're like, I never even thought about that. Like I never thought about doing something like that. And I never kn knew what native land I stood on. Like those simple, those like sort of shifts and like those simple shifts. And people just felt very, I think, like they felt like they belonged in, in this community, even though we were all virtual. Anyway, it was, it was really moving. You can tell I'm like really excited about it. And I kind of tear up thinking about it because I, I actually missed the chaos this week. I'm like, oh, it's so quiet. Like, why is it so quiet? <laughs> and we had, Jen, we had, I talked with Stacy um, after the Stan Institute. Um, so Stacy Meyer is a educational service district leader here in Washington state and she led the cohort for the sort of Western Washington area. I, I don't know exactly how you found it that Jen, but she was so excited about the conversations and about how things went. She apologized to me. She's like, I realized I didn't send you the Zoom link. So I was like, where's the link? I want to get in. <laughs> so, um, but, she, but she debriefed it with me and it was like really helpful for the work that they're doing because she's leading the Climate Justice League work in Washington State. So really helpful to have her connected deeply into that work. Yeah, that's so great to hear. It was lovely to meet her. She was great. Yeah. 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 
anyway, we'll pl figure out a debrief at some point down the road, probably in September. Oh, um, Jen, I was really impressed to see the design for the State Institute um, uh, online. Like I was, I kept going back to the website and looking it over. I work with informal educators, uh, but I was still really interested to see how it went. So I, I would very much love to see a more detailed share out. Uh, we're sure. working on recruiting uh, uh, applications for our next Earth to Sky Academy for in, uh, interpreters and informal educators uh, doing place-based uh, climate communication work. Uh, and uh, our deadline is August 31st, and we actually have an informational webinar this afternoon in about an hour or so. So that's what's keeping me busy right now. Yeah, and if you and if September is like too far away, and you want to talk it talk about it sooner, we could set up a separate conversation. I just I think we're we're still like processing and getting all the evals and surveys and all that stuff back, so we have like a comprehensive report out mechanism that will or whatever it is brief that we can share. But um, but if you want to talk sooner, let me know. Um, I might uh, take you up on that because we're developing a uh, virtual workshop for the National Association for Interpretation Conference in November. And I certainly think what you've done there is set the tone uh, potentially for what we could be doing for virtual professional de development. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll private message you my email and you can chat and in the chat and you can Thank you. figure it out. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Brad. Thanks for the recap. Deb, you said you have something about a panel coming up this week. Yeah, so this is the um, information on it. I just thought it might be interesting to share because I, I was, it was something that came from uh, EduTalk, no, it wasn't it the EduTalk, it was the Earth Lab talk that Frank Neupold and I did out for the University of Washington. And it connected us with um, the College of the Environment here um, and that's particularly important from a lot of different reasons. One is that our College of Environment just got like a 200 plus million dollar um, center for NOAA and a whole bunch of sort of earth system science efforts. And we're really excited that we've made the connection with Isabella Carrera Zamiero. Sorry, I'm working on that one. Zamiero. Um, who is in our sort of equity and instruction across, but deeply connected with the College of Environment. And so they asked me to be on a panel. And even more exciting is I got to meet with folks at the beginning of this week, um, in particular, Polly Olson, who's our tribal liaison um, person at the University of Washington with the College of Environment and with the Burke Museum specifically. And so her and I are going to be, and, and uh, Isabel, are going to be the panelists. And we're going to structure it as just a really informal conversation about educational justice across different boundaries, um, centering on some of the work related to environment and climate justice. And um, I, I think it'll be great. They'll record it, they said, and post it, but that's the, the link so folks know. And um, yeah, it's nice to be able to do things like this that are artifacts in the world that we can and that's why Jenna was also asking if that other session had been recorded. Um, I would love to have a copy of the recording just because for me, like creating these sort of pockets of work are helpful for, for folks who can't synchronously necessarily come into spaces. So, as it is. You were, Deb, you were asking me if your session was recorded? Yes, I know that it was. I don't know if it's if they've rendered everything and gotten it up yet, but I can find out for you. And whatever, that was actually something of a pilot. I've just done that sort of a version of that flow of work in the climb time, like three hours before that, um, that we ran for sort of a longer engagement. And then I popped off and came to you. Um, but it was nerve wracking for me. Like it really pushed my own comfort boundaries of like how to engage um, in conversations from a white positionality about race and racism and anti-blackness activism. And so like, what is it that we do and how, how do we need to speak and be in those spaces? And so I, I felt it, I leaned in a little heavier than I have because I generally take the softer sort of wedge approach in my work, like the 30 year project. But I'm also think that the world's shifting a bit and can hear things in different ways now. So. Mm -hmm. Um, which is really helpful. 
Well, the feedback I got from one of my colleagues that attended was like, she was so awesome. She was like direct and right to the point. And I was like, that's Deb. <laughs> yeah, you didn't have real Canadian roots and just said it like it is. Yeah. In a really nice way. <laughs> In a, nice In a really way. caring, sweet way. <laughs> yeah. And that's actually the thing, Reb, that I, I feel like I'm coming to a better understanding. Like one can be firm and like honest and that's about caring and love. And it's about how we're, you know, like, so, and trying to get away from this issue of white fragility in these conversations to be yeah. like, strength and like, how do we actually do what we have to do and own it, you know? Yeah. We've, we've been talking about that at ACE too, the white supremacy trait of fear of open conflict and how that actually perpetuates, you know, yeah. all those existing power structures that you're trying to dismantle if you're not willing to engage in that conflict in like a caring way yeah yeah big yeah. big growth area for me can i share one of my experiences here mm -hmm. um yeah uh, I, I come from a caste privileged position from my uh upbringing in india very very privileged very very uh um, financially as well as position in the society privileged um I uh, harbored, I, I think my whole family harbored that guilt of uh, there's people we live with who are not getting the same opportunities as we did. And it was, uh, it was something as a family that we felt but didn't know what to do with it. Uh, and I saw my parents make some efforts, but they also stayed within the limits of their I wouldn't say comfort with they stayed within the limits uh, so I wouldn't have to suffer the consequences so they 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 had friends from what we have our uh, our what we call them OBC that is other backward caste that's the that's the term used in, in Indian constitution the term itself is wrong but it is that's what it is OBC and growing up my parents made sure that I was surrounded with people who were from other backward castes and and they that I knew that it, this whole concept of dividing people into different castes was wrong but they also were very hesitant for allowing me to date a person from 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 this section of society because they felt I would suffer a lot of uh, backlash and I would have consequences that would last you know last the rest of my life so so the but I felt that tension growing up and I think that was my biggest uh, uh, lesson is seeing their tension what they were dealing with wanting to make a change and yet uh, yet acknowledging their privilege, extending everything they could do, and yet being scared of, of going in and say, uh, and being the decision maker, because they were always by default, the decision maker, what, whatever they would have said would have gone. And they didn't want that. They want it to be a very involved process. So anyway, what I'm trying to get to the point is I see that happening with my white friends, here now i've been seeing that happening for the entire 15 years i've been i've been living in the us and i've brought to their attention i'm bringing to your attention is that i think you need to make your stress and tension and uncomfortable your your feeling of un uncomfort about it visible because it's not something that you have answers for. It's not something my parents had answers for. It's not something I had answers for. But the experience of that uh, discomfort that I know there's something wrong about this mm -hmm. and I don't have the answers, but I am here. <laughs> I am here to mm -hmm. sit with you in this discomfort. And that, uh, and when your children see it, I think, that 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 creates a big change because i did i grew up having a lot more diversity in my friends i grew up marrying outside my caste i chose a different uh, you know so social setup where i am not the privileged person 
for my uh, rest of my life. And I chose, I made these decisions very, very conscious of what they're, what they're, what they would mean to me. Mm -hmm. So I think my parents' struggle did lead me here. So, and I wish they were more, they were more okay with it and more transparent with it. They were always trying to hide <laughs> their struggle and I could see it. I could see it. I still see it. So, so that's my perspective on that. Thanks, Devardi. I so, I so hear that. Yeah, like not knowing all the answers, not knowing the right thing to do and going there anyway. And we're, we're using like this safe to try model or mantra a lot at ACE right now. Like it's not perfect. We're not gonna have all the answers, but it feels safe to try. So let's try. Which applies to lots of situations. Where I question the, the, the having all the answers, I think we only have that idea because we all, at least for this group, came through traditional systems of education where we had one answer, right answer, the capital T truth to that equation or that whatever, and we got full points for it. I mean, we never got points for our attempt for solving that equation. I mean, I think I got points in 1993 and that one teacher lost his job by the end of the year. So, so yes, I mean, I'm trained to search for that capital T truth times uh, you know so society has become complex we're much more global we're much more mingled and things are not going to be that easy to figure out anymore I mean, so I, 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 I think process is what should have become more important it's a pedagogical change Actually, I feel like I'm seeing that in my son's edu elementary education where the teachers are really pushing this like, it's not like, can you do hard things, right? Like, can you challenge yourself to try to do hard things that you might get wrong, but you're gonna struggle through and persevere and like that that in itself is the outcome that you're going for as opposed to getting the answer? feels like a real shift from the way I was like re challenged and rewarded when I was a kid. Um, I have one uh, item to share, which is not something upcoming, but something that already happened that um, I probably should have shared out about last week, um, but I missed it myself, which was um, my teammates at ACE last Thursday put on um, a webinar event that was called On the Front Lines, Black Lives Matter and Climate Justice, where they brought together um, several um, black leaders, both from um, the Black Lives Matter work as well as climate work. Um, and it was like about an hour long panel and I've been watching the recording um, on on our Facebook and I can put that in the chat. Um, and it was really amazing. Just like lots of learnings for me. I felt like, um, I feel like it was, it was like an academic course. It was like a semester long course on um, like history of racism in the US and intersections with the environmental movement. Um, and I like took tons of notes and learned so much. Um, and so, I would highly recommend it as something to watch um, sometime. The speakers on the panel were um, all of them just like really brilliant and um, incredible. So there's that to add to, add to the collection, Deb. Um, and I am about to actually hop into a three hour, we're having ACEs virtual retreat this week. So I think I need to give myself a few minutes before I dive into another area of like long Zoom meetings. Um, so I don't need, I don't mean to end this, and I don't want to end this, but I think I'm going to hop off and I totally trust this group to, to continue the conversation for the next 10 minutes. Thank you, Rob. Thanks everyone. It was so great to, to hear what thing, people are doing and good work's happening and all of our zombie skill sets. Should it come down to that?
Bye, Thank you. Bye. Well, I'm sorry I missed the last part of that conversation and the transition from my car to the office, but <laughs> I got at least the tail end of it. Um, I guess I sort of have an announcement. I had sent out to the clean listserv that we're doing a climate and energy distance class up here in Alaska, and it like filled up in five days, which was fantastic. And so we're going to probably be offering other sections of it later on in the school year but that's happening next week. And i um, excited to be doing something really Alaska focused with climate and energy. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. Won't be able to be on the call next week because it's during our, uh, li our synchronous times, but I'll let you know how that goes and let you know if for when we have other sections, if people want to, we have like three people who joined from North Carolina. So maybe there's some people who want to <laughs> hear about Alaska stuff from her, around the rest of the lower 48. That's awesome. It's interesting, you know, the, and this comes back to Jen share too, like the way in which we're organizing these sort of virtual spaces and learning contexts in different ways. I mean, it allows us to bring people together in ways that first of all are like way more environmentally friendly and um, also that seem to have way more enrollment than we were generally expecting because we've seen that in the climb time initiative here in the state we had like more than 3,000 teachers i think it ended up being across a few days um go through virtual sessions at the end of the year and we were just like what and and that was like with you know a week and a half notice of the sessions being posted so it was it's, it's been very sort of pleasantly surprising um, in, in the way in which people are navigating these spaces and to try and figure out, you know, how we build community from that gem, sort of building off what you're saying and calling like as you're thinking and going into that, like, how is it that we build longer term community that works and shares around these ideas, the Pacific, Northwest Pacific Tribal Climate Change Network. I always have to think about that acronym. Um, it has monthly calls where they have somebody shares out, sort of like clean calls, and like somebody shares out, and like really expanding that with teachers in ways that are beneficial for them to drop in and listen, or like the virtual pub thing that that um, Dawn has organized, like uh, but for more for K twelve or or community based educators would be really amazing. Yeah, I'm, we're partnering with an um, organization that really includes a lot of indigenous knowledge, mm -hmm. which is, you know, talking about that, getting to that uncomfortable space for me, right, that I am not familiar with, but want to include more of. And so I'm really excited to have that piece of it, like, really be how we're starting out and framing the whole class Obviously, it's important everywhere, but Alaska is a little bit unique with our really, uh, work with indigenous people and in the state compared to many other states. So that's a bit of an good. announcement as well, actually, that's related to what you're just saying, Colleen, that we um, just confirmed for the opening dialogue of ACE. I'm moderating the session next week, and we just confirmed Daniel Wildcat is going to be one of the panelists. So I know, I, I like. That is so great. I know, and he was just like, sure, I'm in. I was like, oh, I'm excited. So yeah, really good, really good. So yeah. If you're talking um, Colleen, in I'll, go oh, ahead. I was just gonna mention there's um, a project that actually we've um, partnered with for the website, clean website, we're trying to highlight um, their resources and course and all the great things they're putting out there. But if anybody's interested, I thought I'd put it in to the chat here. There's a project called um, Living Landscapes that is doing some really great work um, creating culturally responsible uh, or responsive um, climate literacy principles and um, videos and lab assignment and all kinds of different um just teaching resources um for climate climate principle climate literacy principles etc um anyways if you want you should check it out i just put the link into the chat thank you 
Yeah, the group that we're working with, Christy um, Buffington also joins these calls and she's with Arctic and Earth Science. So mm -hmm. we, you know, it, actually we kind of connected through here, which is funny, you get on a national call to meet someone from Alaska, which is so typical. And um, yeah, it was like, hey, we should do a class together. Now we're doing it, which is great. That's so great. I love hearing things, stories like that too, because it helps us know the value of clean that we don't always, you know, um, hear all these connections and stories all the time. So it's nice to hear one of those. Katie, is there a way for clean to house, like not necessarily a vetted collection, but some kind of, like the climate justice video on Facebook related to, that was just mentioned around Black Lives Matter and climate justice. Like it'd be really nice to start pooling those types of video resources in one location that we can find them because they're so scattered right now. Yeah. yeah, I'm just trying to think of kind of how and where to do that because so many things get shared in the chat here sometimes, you know, in terms of like for that, we could have a document for that, but then thinking of, you know, other resources. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, let me think about it a little. Thanks, that's yeah. a great suggestion though, um, how we might be able to do that. Yeah, at the very least, we could compile a document of things that that come up in calls and emails and chats, and uh, maybe find a yeah, way to do that. like a running a running notes kind of a document yeah. or something. An annotated by our, like resource sort of directory that just comes up related to the calls. Yeah, that you could even just put underneath. Yep. Okay. Anyway, just thinking about it because it was sure would be helpful to have these kinds of things in one place. Yeah, I agree. Great idea. All right, I have to get headed to. Nice talking Thanks, to you. Thanks everyone, this was so great. Thanks, yes, um, and we'll do it again. I think we have a couple more informal discussions in August and then we'll get back into our presentations, so. Yep. Thanks everyone. Bye.